Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is what we've deciphered from last year's data using information from just one school. What we've got here is a graph that you're going to become very familiar with over the next year. On this y-axis here we've got national influenza like illness data, which is data taken from GPs around the country on people presenting to them with symptoms that are like influenza. On this axis here we've got the school illness data from the one school who gave us their information. The national data is this blue line and the school's data is this red line. And then along the bottom we've got time, so the weeks. When I first looked at this data I was really quite excited because as you can see the red line from the school peaks about three weeks before the blue line from the national GP data which is really quite exciting because that's exactly what we were looking for. It shows that potentially schools can detect influenza outbreaks earlier than we can using current systems. Here's the same data from last year, but I'm going to reveal it on a weekly basis as you will see it this year. So again, the red line here is the school data and the blue line here is the national GP data. So here's the start of the school year, looks like it drops down and then it comes back up. You can't immediately see it from this graph but actually this was a half term week and we're missing data for this point. So that's an interesting thing that you'd be able to tell us as teachers and students at your school. It wobbles around a bit for a while with the national data staying quite low and then wow we've got a peak but the national data is still quite low. Is this due to chance? I don't know. Again, you'll be able to help me in your schools understand this. Now the blue line for the national data has picked up as well and it's come up to the same sort of level as the school data. But it the school data picked that up three weeks before. Here we've got the school holidays where we're not, we've not got any information for the schools. And when we come back from the school holidays, the, level, the levels of illness in the schools are quite low but the national data is still quite high. Why is that? Again, I think that's something that you'll be able to help us with. And then we, when we look at the rest of the year, in the schools we've got two more peaks. Is this just random variation? Is it chance? Or is there really something going on there? With the national data, this blue line, it comes down to quite low levels and stays there for the rest of the year. So once I've got the data for the year, I then need to think about whether it really represents truth or whether there are alternative explanations for what I'm seeing. When I'm doing that, I consider three things for these alternative explanations. The first one is chance, the second is bias, and the third is confounding. You can flip a coin ten times in a row you might get 10 heads in a row. There's nothing special about this coin. In the same way, is this red line, this peak, just a chance occurrence that it happens just before this blue peak? Or is it, like the flipping a coin, just a chance occurrence? By having more schools involved in the project this year, we'll be able to answer that question a bit more carefully than we can with just one school's worth of data. You're taking part in Decipher My Data, and you're one of only a hundred schools across the country doing this. Is there something different about your schools to those schools that are not taking part in Decipher My Data? For example, are your science lessons so interesting that you'd come into school even if you were ill? This is an example of selection bias. You're learning a lot about influenza and its symptoms. It's possible that if you have influenza, that you might be more likely to take time off school. It's also possible, if you have influenza, that you're less likely to take time off school. That's in comparison to other schools around the country that are not taking part in deciphering my data. In the data we have from last year, is this peak really due to influenza? Or could it be due to an outbreak of diarrhoea and vomiting in your school? This is another thing that we'll be looking for your help with when we're analysing the data.
until now we've been looking at data from just one school for last year. Here we've got some made up data which looks like the sort of graphs that you'll get for your school for this year. When you're looking at this data, you'll be able to compare the levels of illness across your school and amongst different year groups. So is year seven different to year eight? Why might that be? What are the explanations for that? That's where you can help us. You'll also be able to compare your school to other schools across the country and within your region. Is your school behaving differently? For example, is there a peak before other schools in the region? Or have you got no peak when school other schools in the regions do have a peak? Finally, you'll be able to compare your data to the influenza-like illness data from GPs. We've got data from all GPs across the country and within your region. You'll be able to look at whether schools within your region compare to GP data across that region and nationally. Do we see a peak at the same time? Is that peak occurring before or after? These are the sorts of things we'll be looking at this year and we'll be looking for your help to help us understand why they might be occurring. The other sort of analysis we're going to do as part of Decipher My Data is XY scatter graphs. We've got some examples here. Oh, Charlotte's just come back to the office. Hi. Yeah. Hey, what are you doing? I'm just looking at some example data for the, the XY scatter graphs that we've got. Do you want to have a look at them? Okay, sure. So what have you got? So we've got some example data here of school illness and public transport use. Okay, so the red blobs, are they a school? Yeah, they're, they're individual schools. And what do you think about it at the moment? It just looks like a mess really, doesn't it? I, mean, yeah. I can't see any correlation. No, there doesn't really appear to be any correlation. They're all over the place, aren't yeah. they? I've got an exa another example um, here. It's all made up data. So again, it's school illness and public transport. Okay, so you've got quite a nice linear correlation, haven't you? So as the percentage of pupils using public transport goes up, so the rates of illness go up. Yeah, And you can exactly. see how that might be true, actually, can't you? Because people cough and sneeze on public transport, they're all closely packed in together on the bus. Exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. Exactly. And I think that's the sort of thing that we'd be looking to sort of see if there is examples of this within the data that we see this year.